Right, welcome to this codex review for uh, Eldar Harlequins. Uh, new release from Games Workshop, they've done uh, a separate codex uh, for the Harlequins. I think it's a really good idea. Uh, it gives you an option to build your own Harlequin themed army. There's some uh, new releases they've added to it as well, so you're able to have enough variety to make up some kind of force. Uh, another good idea is to take them as allies as well. If you've got Dark Elder, Eldar, um, you can add a detachment of Harlequins. Uh, to that army. So that's the options there. I'm going to run through the codex here. Uh, it is tempting to expand uh, the Harlequins I already have. Uh, you know, I've got a unit of 10 Shadow Seer as well, uh, but I could expand on that uh, and build a, an, a, an allied force from it. It'd be interesting to do it. It's a nice theme, very strong theme behind them. Uh, but what we're going to do is going to run through the codex here, look at the new weapons, uh, new units, vehicles, uh, and I'll give you my take on what I think would make a good army, what units are good, what units aren't um, and then you'll sort of get an idea of I was going to go down the route of building uh, a Harlequin force, what kind of army it would look like. So I've got my codex from GamingFigures.com uh, they do uh, Games Workshop stuff at a discounted rate 15% uh, off and then if your order comes to over £100 uh, you get another 5% off on top of that and then in the UK there's free postage on your order as well. So that's where I've got the codex from. Uh, it just means you're not paying full price, you know, you can get a, a pretty uh, good discount off from the cost. As I said, I've got a unit of 10 Harlequins. I enjoyed painting them. It was a long process. Uh, I didn't hold back. I, I did a lot of patterning on them um, and uh, the the end result was very good. That was the old lead ones. Uh, I got a Shadow Seer as well. Uh, but now, you know, they're in plastic. Uh, I've added some characters and some vehicles. So there's more variety to them. So it is tempting to get more Harlequins. Uh, there's nice artwork in here as we go into the codex. Again, these are, seeing these in the front of the codex is now like a colour palette. That's inspiration there for the kind of colours that you can use for them. That's a sort of classic style uh, that I painted mine. I sort of reflected that uh, typical Harlequin look, but they have introduced uh, some other types. Some crazy artwork they've done. This looks really good. Very atmospheric. Uh, there's a good uh, background story on it now. Uh, with their own dedicated codex, you, know, you get a lot more background information. Specifically on the Harlequins. Another one of the new illustrations there. Yeah, and the, I like to create an army that reflects the, you know, the background story as much as possible. So you've got this kind of army that appears from nowhere, it turns up and you have your, your disciplined vehicles and troops and then these guys, a bunch of clowns turn up and ruin the whole thing. That's the kind of army you'd want to do, that's what the army I'd like to do is just this clown army that just turns up and wrecks everything and just I can imagine it being very enjoyable doing it. Another great picture here, uh, looks like they're combined with Eldar allies. Taking on the Ultramarines. So that's the typical colour scheme, that's the scheme that I followed, uh, but there's background information in the different unit types, uh, but coming up there are different colour schemes that you can go for. These new vehicles here, Star Weavers, Void Reavers, Sky Weavers, the two man jet bike is a good idea to have, some more great artwork there. Pretty much an illustration of them taking on every type of foe, and that's really what you can do with the Harlequins, you know, they uh, take on anyone and cause trouble. Death Jesters, Solitaires, another great piece of artwork there. This one's a very weird feel to it, these dancing clowns uh, just causing mayhem and trouble. Very atmospheric, eerie one, again this one here as well. Taking the tower. There's plenty in this codex. Right, so you've got these different colour schemes here, some very, very striking ones. Like this one here, very, very different looking. Here as well, crazy colour schemes here and here. My preference still is for that traditional colour scheme, uh, the one that I've already done. Um, would be happy with that. I do like uh, black and yellow, uh, looks nice. Uh, in patterns as well, I did do quite a bit of that in the original paint scheme for them. Some new, some new weapons for them. Big two page spread there. Uh, 
other atmospheric face art one. Yes, yeah, so that's the kind of colour scheme that I like. And again, that would reflect uh, the army that I want to make. So you've got these. Um, I think I've mechanised the whole lot uh, and have them all transported, dropping them off, little groups dropping off here and there, causing trouble, and then these jet bikes as well. Um, it's a very mobile army that just uh, moves up and over the top of their foe and then just disembarks and causes chaos. Um, that's a good idea. Nice colour scheme there. Not bad. These ones look pretty good. Uh, probably not enough colour in them ones for me. Uh, green. Look okay. This one's not too bad. The thing that does put me off is I would like to go for all these patterns and things, um, but obviously this means there's work involved in that. Um, it would be worth it. I mean, the, these are so striking to look at, um, but I, I think that's my favourite. There. They look very nice indeed. Right, so a Harlequin mask, that's a, a, a battle group of them. No HQ here. Uh, but compulsory choices for them. It's interesting, you've got to take three troops. These are compulsory choices if you want a, bounding, a bound army. Two fast attacks and you have to take heavy support. Uh, four elites are optional. Uh, well, seven elites are optional on top of that. So, yeah, it's kind of... If you're going to take them as allies, there'll be a fair amount of them in your force. Probably half your army is going to be Harlequins. Um, or uh, it's pushing in the direction of building a dedicated... Uh, Harlequin army. If you stick to this, you get uh, emissary of Kegorak. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right. If you have selected a troop master from this attachment as your warlord, you can reroll the result on the warlord troops table, uh, warlord traits table. Rising crescendo from the start of the second turn. All units in this attachment have fleet special that have fleet can run and charge in the same turn. Just gives them a little bit more speed. Uh, when they make that charge, which can be helpful if that's the kind of um, theme uh, that you want your army to go for. The theme that I'm looking at here is, is all mechanised, fly across the table very, very fast, uh, and then engage quickly, sort of turn two onwards and hit your opponent before they even know it. I think that is possible to do now in 40k, and I think it's possible uh, with this the Harlequins now that they've got these vehicles that they can uh, ride in and be transported by. I think that was the big, the gaping hole for... Harlequins, you know, previously with the Eldar, you can only put them in a Wave Serpent, and the Wave Serpent, they get out, they can shoot, but they can't assault with a big disadvantage. But now, uh, you've got vehicles that they can move up, and uh, they're open-topped, and they can disembark and charge. So it's a new lease of life here for Harlequins, um, for you to do a dedicated army. So you've got Harlequin, uh, or gear list, we'll come back to that later. It's just got Enigmas of the Black Library there, and none of the other weapons are listed. Uh, so... First of all is a troop, a Harlequin troop, and uh, that is your troop's choice. 95 points, uh, gets you four players as they're called now, and then one troop master is included in that. 15 points each uh, for every um, Harlequin you add, or every player you add on top of that. Weapon skill 5, ballistic skill 4, so that's very good. Strength and toughness 3, wounds 1, initiative 6, which is very, very good indeed. Two attacks is basic, and leadership nine. So it's a good stat line. Um, so anything here for Harlequins is strength and toughness, and armor save is their weakness. Um, so you're going to have to bear that in mind and compensate for it as best as you can. Uh, they get a hollow suit. We'll look these up here uh, just to check they haven't changed. So you just get five plus in uh, which is handy enough. So 33% of whatever's going to hit you, you're going to save it. Um, no matter what strength or AP, or whether it's a template weapon or whatever, you'll save it. So uh, it will stop one third of stuff coming through. But still, uh, this means that you've, you're going to need to strike first. The importance of this army is that you strike first and do the damage because you're not going to be able to stand up to much damage in return, either from shooting or in combat. Uh, so... Shuriken Pistol, Close Combat Weapon, you're going to get your extra attack, it's your free attacks there. Plasma Grenades, so you can be able to flush units out of cover. And then a Flip Belt, we'll look that up. Model with a Flip, flip Belt 
It's not slowed by difficult terrain and does not suffer a penalty to its initiative for charging through difficult terrain. In addition, uh, the, a character with Flipper always passes lookout Sir uh, rolls on a 2 plus. So a bit of protection there for your regular characters, which will be things like Troop Master. Instead of 4 plus, it would be 2 plus to protect them. That's quite good. That's very good. Uh, so again, a speed here for them, which helps. And you can flush units out of cover, you know, there's nowhere to hide and you'll still go first. Uh, they cause fear, they have fleet, they have furious charge, uh, so that's going to help you in regards to the strength. Again, encouraging you to strike first, do the damage, and then try and eliminate your opponent or cripple them so badly they can't strike back uh, very effectively. And then they have hit and run. So they do get caught out, or they're in. Uh, say you're locked in a combat on your opponent's turn, you can try and hit and run from that, pull out, charge back in and get your bonuses. Um, so that's an option for them. Uh, any model may replace their shuriken pistol with one of the following. So there's some pistols here, uh, it may well be worth it. You keep your attack here if you keep the combat weapon, you know, because the pistol's going to still grant you that. Um, and you're at BS4, so you've, for shooting, you know, you've got a decent chance. So we'll check these out. Neuro Disruptor is a new one. So it's uh, range 12, strength 1, AP2, pistol, flesh, bane. So uh, that's where you're always wounding on a 2 plus. So that's a very, it's a very good weapon. That is a very good weapon. Uh, you know, so this gives them, now you're looking at a, a, a troop of Harlequins can now take on uh, a monstrous creature there. You're going to hit on 3+, plus, wound on 2+, plus, it's AP2, uh, or Terminators, that kind of thing. It's a nasty pistol, that one, and it's 10 points. So it's not too bad, the cost in that one. Fusion pistol then. Fusion pistol is range 6, strength 8, AP1, Melter. So you're going to have to get within three inches for that to be effective. The Neuro Disruptor is interesting, it's double the range, it's 12 inches. So Neuro Disruptors, I do like the sound of them, so that might be an option. May well be an option, take maybe two of them, two or three. Uh, any model may replace their chosen combat weapon with one of the following. Now, I think for these, if I, I'd probably take, depending on the transport capacity uh, for the vehicles, um, five or six um, seems a good number and then because you're expecting these to take some casualties to be shot at what I tend to do is uh, try and take those upgrades um, put them on a couple of the models and then bury them in the unit uh, so you'd have three four two or three perhaps four with no upgrades at all they're the ones that absorb casualties uh, and then it's the others, the Troop Master especially, give him upgrades because of his good stat line to use it, ballistic skill 5 there, you know, for any pistols and so on, uh, free attacks, that's basic for him, um, so pile the upgrades onto him, and maybe a couple of others, and then the others can absorb the casualties and you're still preserving your assets inside that. Um, I think that's how I'd do it. Um, and it's a cheaper way of doing it, instead of, um, you know, paying 10 points for pistols all the way across here and then uh, more points for close combat weapons as well. You're keeping these all cheap and then um, just spending out on a couple of the figures. Uh, if you come up against an, a, a unit that's tough, you know, a monster screech brood or something or a tough vehicle, then in a game I can't see any harm in just using a couple of these troops to gang up uh, so that you're guaranteed to eliminate your target. So I think that's how I'd do it, um, just protecting the upgrades that you have. Right, so then uh, you've got options here to replace your close combat weapon, uh, and there's a number of options here. They don't seem too expensive, so it'd be interesting to see what these can do. It used to be a Harlequin's Kiss, we know that weapon, um, but you can take a Harlequin's Caress and a Harlequin's Embrace. So we'll look at them here, page 91, Harlequin's Embrace. Again, you may be able to specialise with your upgrades so that the unit can take on certain types uh, of opponents, so Harlequin's Embrace here. So it's the strength of the user, so strength 3 or strength 4 on the charge. So melee weapons, you'll still keep your extra attack. Uh, and then Embrace of Death, 
A model equipped with a Harlequin's Embrace has Hammer of Wrath, special rule, but makes a D3 Hammer of Wrath's attack that hit automatically and resolved at strength 6. So... Yeah... That's alright. It's not bad, a 5 point upgrade. Um, be handy against maybe trying to cause wounds against monstrous creatures. Um, or maybe you're trying to glance a vehicle, rear armor 10, rear armor 11. You know, at strength 6, you're going to cause some damage there. So, yeah, interesting that one. Not bad. Uh, we'll stay here and look at my Harlequin. So that's 5 points. Uh, for another 5 points, you can take uh, 5 points again, you can take Harlequin's Kiss. That's again strength for the user, it's a melee weapon, kiss of death. When a model equipped with Harlequin's Kiss makes its close combat attacks, one of its attacks will be a kiss of death attack. Roll this attack separately, so um, you may miss with this one attack. A kiss of death attack is always resolved at strength 6, AP 2. If a 6 is rolled to wound with a kiss of death attack, that attack has instant death. Right, so it used to be rending, um, now just one of your attacks will be your ult hit normally, then it's strength 6 AP 2. Again, not bad. Um, so, so I, I, the, the AP 2 here, I think it's going to be more effective against things like if you're going to hunt down Terminators for example, or uh, monstrous creatures where they have you know two plus armor save then you can be able to punch through that a bit more effectively if you're after causing a saturation of hits um say against an opponent that's got a four plus up five plus armor save, even power armor three plus um a whole load of strength six hits um you can make them you know foul their armor save just through volume of hits uh and the same for glancing vehicles just the volume of hits you're going to get them glancing and penetrating hits so they're about even i think the other one is a Harlequin's Caress, uh, page 31, it's on here as well, Harlequin's Caress. So again, Strength of the User, Melee, Caress of Death. Each to hit roll of 6, made by weapon, special roll causes an automatic wound, regardless of toughness, and resolved AP2. Against vehicles, each to hit roll of a 6 causes a single automatic glancing hit. Yeah, they're interested in these. Um, again, again, I, I feel that I would go down the route of uh, dedicating. If you have three troops, three Harlequin troops, kit them out with each type, and then maybe just chase whatever chosen units you're after. Maybe something like that. This one, um, you're, every six you roll to hit, so if you get a roll, so you get 12 attacks, so you can get a couple of hits. Um, it's going to be AP2, and then 6s to hit, cause a glance. Well, that's quite a good all-rounder there, that Caress of Death. So, yeah, interesting. I think that's it there. Could be wrong. Um, there's the Harlequin's Kiss, that rod that's the that pistol thing they stick inside and the wire flies out. Uh, but no, it's an interesting selection. I'm not sure... Uh, what ones I choose, they all seem pretty good. Um, and they're quite cheap in points as well. The Troop Master may replace his close combat weapon with a power sword, 15 points to do it. Um, probably wouldn't bother with that. I'd probably equip him with one of these instead. Yeah, I think I really would equip him with one of these instead. It's half, they're gonna be half the price, or even a third of the price. And uh, it does say any model may replace. Yeah, so I'd probably equip the Troop Master Drop the power sword and give them. Because some of these are based on, you know, the amount of dice that you can get more dice the better, like the caress and so on. Um, so his high volume amount of attacks makes that more viable. Uh, the troop master may take haywire grenades. Yeah, maybe an option. Okay, haywire grenades, interesting. You may well give them that. Throw one, place one in combat against vehicles. The troop master. Uh, may take items from the Enigmas of the Black Library. We'll come to that later on. And you can take a Star Weaver as a dedicated transport. We'll come to that. But yeah, I would kit them out multiple combinations. I think I'd enjoy making different combinations. 
Harlequin troops. And then take small units, I think. So if one unit gets blown away, you know, there's two, three, four others that are just as well kitted out to take their place. So let's have a look here, 95 points, maybe take an extra Harlequin, 110, a couple of pistols. So really you're looking to equip them out for about 130 to 140 points. That means that it's not, you know, it's a decently equipped unit, but it's not too expensive. Um, yeah, not too bad. Right, so next one's the Death Jester. Uh, he is 60 points. Weapon skill 5, ballistic skill 5, strength and toughness 3, you get 2 wounds for him, 3 attacks, initiative 7, LD 10. Uh, let's just check here, Troop Master, it's LD 10, L LD is very good on Harlequins. He gets a hollow suit, so he's got a 5 plus in one. He has a Shrieker Cannon, and flip bow. we'll check the Shrieker Cannon out here. It's range 24, it's strength 6, AP 5, assault 3, so I'm hitting on 2's remember, Blade Storm. Uh, every six to wound uh, is at AP2. Okay. Hmm. Okay. It causes fear. He has fleet, furious charge, hit and run, independent character, and precision shots. I mean, even with precision shots, you know, six is to hit, and then you've got to get a six on the wound, then cause that AP2. Uh, you can give him haywire grenades, but if he's buried in a unit, that, you know the character already has hay haywire grenades. That unit can only throw one plate. Um, can only throw one uh, grenade from the unit. Uh, it means he could place one in combat, though. Death is not enough. Enemy unit that suffers one or more casualties from death, just as shrieky cannon during the shooting phase, must take a morale check with minus two, as if it had suffered 25% casualties. That's interesting. This test is failed. Death Jester's controlling player chooses the direction the enemy unit falls back this phase. Okay. Kind of a weird one, that one. Quite cool. Um, nice model. Um, just not sure about him. He is nice. I mean, you, your options are limited. There's only a, a, a few units in... Uh, the Harlequin Codex, but see, I'm just thinking of having uh, mechanized units that are flying up the table, not really worrying about shooting. Combat's the emphasis. Um, so, you know, him embarks in transport that's bombing it right up the table. Um, and to spend out 60 points on him, I probably wouldn't bother with that, not sure. Shadow Seer is next. Again, 60 points. Weapon skill 6, ballistic skill 4, 2 wounds, initiative 7, 3 attacks, LD 10, hollow suit for him. He has hallucinogen grenade launcher. Um, so that is range 18, it's blast, strength 1, assault 1, hallucinogenic. At the end of this shooting phase, a unit that has suffered one more hits from a weapon with this special rule. Uh, in that phase must take a pinning test. If the test is fouled, in addition to being pinned in it suffers a single wound with no armour, cover saves allowed. The wound is randomly allocated. You only have to hit them. They have to make a pinning check. It's kind of units to help suppress the enemy um, as you move in for the kill. Um, okay. Uh, flip belt for him again, beautiful miniature, very very nice. Uh, a mist stave, page ninety one. Plus two strength, so he'll be at strength five, strength six on the charge. Uh, flesh bane and concussive. And he has that as standard. So he's geared out for some kind of combat here. Not bad. Um, so he's a psyker here, master level one. He's an independent character, hit and run, furious charge, and all the other bits there. He can take powers from the Phanta Phantasmancy, Demonology, Sanctic, and Telepathy. So it's giving you a little bit of an option there for psychic powers. Uh, you can go to master level two for 25 points. Uh, you can take a Neuro Disrupt. We've seen that pistol's very good. So it would be quite cool to give that to him. He's only BS4 though. 
you can take haywire grenades. So, you know, maybe a couple of your troops, they can you can embed one of these characters into it, uh, just for a bit of fun and add a bit of variety um, to your force, and then kit them out with some nasty stuff. Um, he's pretty well equipped, actually. The Shadow Seer, so that's another option. Right next up is the Solitaire. He's 145 points. Elite choice. He's weapon skill 9, ballistic skill 9, strength and toughness 3, 3 wounds, initiative 10, 6 attacks, and leadership 10. Okay. Here's a hollow suit. Uh, so, 5 plus in one for him. Harlequin's caress as standard. And then Harlequin's kiss as well. So, he's 7 attacks now. Probably always going to be hitting on 3 plus. And a flip belt. He has deep strike. Eternal warrior. So, that's very, very good. If he takes. You know, instant death's always been a problem for toughness 3. Uh, characters, but he has Eternal Warrior. Causes fear, he is fearless. Fleet, furious charge, hit and run, and precision strikes. It's like a bit of an assassin as well. He can be in close combat. It's a strange old miniature, and strange old rules for him. There's a load of other bonuses here, he's pretty good actually. Uh, blitz once per game at the start of any of the controlling players' movement phases, the Solitaire can move in the following manner instead of moving normally or a number of d6 equal to the current turn number uh, the result is the number in inches that the solitaire can move when moving in this manner the solitaire can move over all other models and terrain as if they're open ground but it cannot end its move on top of other models or impassable terrain in the assault phase of the turn in which the solitaire moves in this manner its attacks characteristic is increased to 10. So, you know, the longer you leave it, then the more the further he can move. You can jump over anything. And it counts as just a normal move, so you're allowed to assault after you've done it. And you get 10 attacks. It's mad. It's, a mad, it's one of the most bizarre rules I've seen. Crazy. Impossible form is a free plus in one. Makes him extremely good. Path of Damnation, Solitaire can never be joined by another character. If a Solitaire is joined his Warlord, he never has a Warlord trait. So he's on his own. Uh, and he may move 12 in the movement phase anyway. So he's fast. Uh, so he looks like this little weak thing on the table, but he moves quick, strikes with crazy amount of attacks, and is actually very well protected. You can give him Haywire Grenades, at ballistic skill 9, that may well be an option, and then you can give him these upgrades from the Black Library as well, Enigmas of the Black Library. It's a fascinating uh, model and rules for him, and I think I really would include him. He's, he's so small you could just hide him on the table out of sight, and then just, as it says here, blitz him and cause a ton of trouble. Fascinating that one. Right, next one's uh, Skyweavers. These are the two-man uh, jet bikes that you can get for Harlequins now. So 100 points, but that gets you two of them. They're 50 points a model. Um, so they're a fair bit more than your regular jet bike. Uh, so... They have hollow suits. Uh, that's interesting straight away. That means that means that they have a 5 plus jet bike, so a 5 plus in one. Okay. Uh, weapon skill 5, toughness 4, 2 wounds, 3 attacks, and a 4 plus save as well. As well. Leadership 9, initiative 6. So, immediately starting to like the idea of these. Uh, right, Star Bowlers, page 90. Star Bowlers. Range 12, Strength 6, AP 2, Assault 1, Blast, 1 use only. 
Uh, you can fire at star bowlers in addition to its jet bikes weapons. So this is a shock weapon, you're going to get one use. It's shorter range, range 12 is not too bad. It's blast, strength 6, AP 2. So you, crazy trouble you could cause. Unit terminators and then you come with these star bowlers um, and then uh, you just unleash them and just cause a horrendous amount of trouble and damage. Especially against highly armed, you know, space marines, uh, terminators, that kind of thing. They strength 6 AP2 are going to cause havoc. Mirage launchers. Check out these. Get a nice lot of uh, kit without any paying for the upgrades. Mirage launches once per game. Uh, instead of using its Jink special rule, you need entirely composed models of this with Mirage launchers. Can trigger them uh, when they are selected as the target of shooting attack. If the unit triggers its Mirage launchers, all models in the unit have 4 plus in one. Uh, save against shooting attacks to the start of their movement phase. So, you know, and it may be once per game you need it. Just that turn where you're bombing it up the table, you're exposed to fire, you just trigger your Mirage launchers, um, and then uh, you're protected. Let's just hang on a second here. Yeah, you do it instead of Jink. It's not a thing that you fire. It says Mirage launchers, but you don't f fire them in the shooting phase. That's what I'm wondering. You just you use them instead of your Jink. Um, so remember to let those off, and it offers you a 4 plus in one. So you, can get, so you get ambushed by a template weapon, and usually that's big trouble. Um, no, it'll be a 4 plus in one. Not a 4 plus cover save. Uh, and that comes as standard. Skyweaver jet bike, let's just check here. Uh, it has a 4 plus armor save, shuriken cannon, and it's uh, Eldar jet bike. So shuriken cannon as standard underneath. So they're very well equipped. Uh, yeah, I'd definitely take a unit or two of them. They cause fear, they have furious charge and they have hit and run. Okay, Mirage launches here. It's just a jink, it's not actually safe, okay. Uh, they're 50 points each, so I'd probably take units of four or five. I would think units of four or five. Uh, options here, for ten points you can give them a Zephyr Glaive, which is this blade here I think. Uh, you can mix and match them. So a Zephyr Glaive is plus one strength. Um, well, there's two profiles here. Uh, the first one is the turn that you charge. It's a melee weapon, uh, so you'll get your attack still, because uh, it's carrying a pistol as well. I believe. Let's just look. Mm, nope. No, not. So, just your stab, but your base of three attacks anyway. Uh, so, on the turn that you charge, you'll be plus one strength, uh, an AP2, and then thereafter it's AP3 and normal strength. Okay. So, pretty good in combat, not bad. Would maybe. Would maybe leave the combat to the troops and then have these jet bikes support for them, fire support um, to cause damage. You know, when you charge a troop in, there's only six of them, um, you know, they're going to need a bit of help if you can move these up and give some fire support to whittle a tactical squad down to, from 10 down to 5 or a uh, unit of Terminators to destroy two of them. Leave smaller units for the troops, uh, Harlequin troops, to deal with. That might be a good, you know, uh, relationship between these units to do. Uh, any model may replace their Sky of Jet Bikes Shuriken Cannon with a Haywire Cannon. Okay. Haywire Cannon is range 24, strength 4, AP 4. It's blast, so still you can use it for anti infantry, but it's Haywire. Right. Very good. I think I'd have a dedicated anti tank unit. Probably give them all haywire cannons. Say five points to do it. Take five of them, give them haywire cannons, uh, five shots, freeze to hit, say so you hit with three or four, and then twos to uh, cause glancing hits. You're going to uh, cause trouble with vehicles, and that's at range. You can keep these guys back. 
uh, or you could the Aerodot jetbikes, you can move them, shoot them, and then uh, move them out of trouble. So that I had to have, again, dedicating the units to certain roles. Um, yeah. So there's, there's three roles for them here. There's that, there's tank hunting, there's infantry hunting at close range, and then there's combat if you want to give them as effort lanes as well. So flexibility with them that needs to be because there's, there's not many units in the codex here. But yes, I love the look of them. A two-man jet bike looks brilliant, um, and they look very nice, and uh, their equipment is pretty cool as well. So sky weavers, definitely. All right, so onto star weavers here. This is the transport. Uh, for your Harlequin troops. Similar to a Viper, uh, but it's a transport vehicle. 70 points, uh, and now it's a transport vehicle, it's, it's going to be, you know, equipment, it's not going to be too heavy on equipment. So I'm, or heavy on uh, defence, so I'm anticipating these are going to get blown away. They're going to be targeted, and your opponent's going to try and bring them down. 70 points, ballistic skill 4. It's 10 all round and then only two hull points, so they are a weak, open top little vehicle. Uh, but they are open top to transports, they're skimmer and fast, they can move up quick. So they've got two shuriken cannons, Not I, was, I didn't see this one here, so they've actually got two, so there's a fair amount of fire. Uh, there's no upgrades for them. Two shuriken cannons, so you can chuck out some decent fire. If any, after you've moved up, if any survive, then you can start jumping over stuff, hitting side armour, uh, taking a monstrous creatures at these. Uh, these higher strength uh, weapons here with the blade storm roll. So armed well enough. Uh, hollow fields. So you're on. Uh, you've got your invul save there. Mirage launchers as standard as well. So imagine you activating these first, and you, know, you deploy your army. Your opponent maybe goes first. Incoming shots. You activate these mirage launchers, try and stay alive. Transport capacity is six. So I would go to the max of that. Um, take a Harlequin troop of five and then put a character in there or a unit of six. Uh, the actual vehicle causes fear would you believe. So there it is, the 70 points time, um, you haven't even got the option to pile an upgrades on top but there they are. Um, so take those uh, to carry the Harlequins in. Next up is the Void Weaver. Um, that is your heavy support. Uh, you have to take uh, one of these. It's 75 points. Same profile here, exactly the same. It's not too, you know, not, not tough and only two hard points. Comes with a haywire cannon as standard. Two shuriken cannons as standard. Hollow fields, mirage launchers again, and they cause fear. Aft weapon. Whenever a void weaver, whenever a void weaver shoots, the shuriken cannon mounted on its aft can shoot at a different target to the void weaver's other weapons. The so shuriken cannon mounted on the vehicle, void weaver's aft can only target units are in the void weaver's rear armor facing. So again, that is um, reflecting that idea for the army that you you fly towards your opponent, you go up and over the top of them, and then you just land right in the middle. If it, it's geared here that you can do it, you go up and over the top, um, say turn one you move right up, second turn uh, you move up and over your opponent um, and then you can fire into their rear fire ahead, there's that flexibility of them. Um, so it's kind of encouraging to get in and amongst your opponent, usually that you get put off with that vehicle, you know, in amongst your opponent, you know, you're going to get assaulted but they, you've got invuns here on them so it's going to add some protection if they do get charged in close combat. A little bit. They're disposable, really. They are disposable. Hmm. Okay. So I'm thinking from taking lots of these, uh, you're going to start eating into your your other units. Uh, the, you know the cost for other units. Uh, so there's the points cost one. You can take up to two additional, so you can max them out to unit three. You can take. Uh, Take away the haywire cannon and take a prismatic cannon. There's only five points. Prismatic cannon. Uh, it's you can. There's three options here. You can fire, dispersed, which is strength three AP four, large blast. 
tech on hordes. You can fight focused. Uh, these are all range 24, strength 5, AP 3, blast. Or you can do lance, shot at strength 7, AP 2, uh, lance. So there's some options there. Uh, pretty good, quite a dynamic weapon. Uh, that one to take. Right, formations then. Uh, Segorak, Hegorak, Revenge, not sure how to pronounce that. Uh, three troops, three Death Jesters, three Shadow Seers, one Solitaire, two units of Sky Weavers, one unit of Void Weavers. So, immediately it's sort of making me go down the path of taking three Death Jesters, three Shadow Seers. Um, but anyway, is it worth it here, the formation? Uh, you can re-roll invulnerable saves of a 1 for all models in this formation. Well, that's, that's extremely good. Uh, handy for a solitaire, that's for sure. Emissary of uh, Segarak. If you have selected a troop master from this formation as your warlord, you can re-roll the result on the war's traits table. Okay, and then... Um, from the start of the rising crescendo and the start of the second turn onwards, all units in this formation have fleet and can run and charge in the same turn. So not bad. Uh, if you like the idea of those units, then that's a, a pretty that is a pretty good uh, rock grade to have. The Serpent's Brood is the next one. So just take three troops, three star weavers. Uh, we need Void Weavers and two Sky Weavers. Emissary of... If you have selected a Troop Master, you can re-roll on the Traits table. Okay. Sky Stride. A troop from this formation can use its Hit and Run Special Rule to embark upon an unoccupied Star Weaver from the, his formation. As long as the distance rolled from the Hit and Run move in inches is sufficient to allow it models in the unit, including any characters they have joined it to move within two of an occupied Star Weaver from this formation. Uh, and the unit can immediately embark. Furthermore, if all models and the unit can consolidate within two, you have an occupied star even this formation unit can then immediately embark. That's not bad, but quite complicated that one. i um, probably forget to do it. Yeah, it's quite tricky to pull that one off. Um, so, that's not bad. Cast of players. One troop, one death jester, one shadow seer. So that's doable. Um, They'll get Crusader. Uh, you've got to put them together. The Shadow Seer, Death Jester. Uh, now that's interesting because you get five in the Harlequin troop. There, if you have to take that, makes these two that makes it up to seven. Uh, that means you can't take the transport form. So this is a foot uh, unit. They have to go on foot. That's why they're given Crusader. Any models with the Dark Elder, with the Elder or Dark Elder faction, friend or foe in six, have the Crusader special. Okay. Uh, Segorax, Kagorax, Jest. Uh, one troop, one unit of Sky Weavers, and one unit of Void Weavers. Void Weavers. Uh, you get Rising Crescendo for them. So it's nice flexibility, and it's more. Uh, the Hero's Path, one Death Jester, one Shadow Seer, one Solitaire. Infiltrate, Shrouded, Stealth. A solitary Path. And now uh, that, that has just made that taking those as individuals uh, a very good option indeed. Shrouded and Stealth, that's mad. That's fascinating, actually. Um, for this guy, he's going to be on his own anyway. I had thought about taking him on his own and just sticking him in a building somewhere and just let him snipe away. Now, there is a very good incentive to do it. You're going to get shrouded stealth and you'll be able to infiltrate him. And the same with the Shadow Seer as well. So, because of that formation, um, now it's very viable, viable for taking those free. So, I like the idea of that. Um, so, keep your troops Harlequin troops separate, let them go about their business, and then just scatter these guys across the table. 
um, I think is uh, a, a very good option now because they are nice models and as I said you know there's not too many options in the codex so that is a very good incentive for then taking those free and then just letting them have free reign across the table. Uh, Fail choose blade here. Uh, two units of sky weavers and one unit of void weavers. Okay, so I was thinking about doing something like that. Anyway, and if you take them, uh, if you decide to jink with a unit from this formation, you can reroll cover saves. Right, this is very very good. So this one, this one uh, would fit the proposed army very very well it's just adding some very nice enhancements to them so that's the units there a couple of special rules so these are your alliances here battle brothers dark elder and elder uh, you can have allies of convenience of imperial or armies of the imperium and tower empire it's interesting Desperate Allies of Orcs, and then come the Apocalypse of Chaos Demons, Chaos Space Marines, Necrons, Tyranids. Uh, Warlord Traits here, and there's a triple table. If your Warlord is a Death Jester or Shadow Seer, you can either roll a d6 on one of the Warlord Traits tables uh, in the rulebook, or d3 on either of the Light, Twilight, or Dark Warlord Traits to the right. So you're restricted there, d3. If your Warlord is a Troop Master, you can either roll on the normal Warlord Traits table in the rulebook, or D6 uh, on any of these three tables. Interesting. So encouraging you, I think, to take a Troop Master as your Army Commander. So run through these here. Uh, you can choose. Uh, so Light is the first one. The Luck of the Laughing God. Your Warlord re-rolls all to hit rolls of one, shooting and close combat, and all saving throws of one. So that's, that's good actually, that's good. So immediately that's pretty good. Uh, Factual Storm, your Warlord does a four plus inbound. Okay, pretty cool. A foot in the future, your Warlord and his unit can add one to the distance they can move whenever they move. This means they can move up to seven in the movement phase, and move one further when they run, charge, fall back, regroup. Hit and run, consolidates if you advance. Okay, that's all right. That's not bad, it's hard, just an inch. Uh, the hero's call. You can add four to any roll to seize the initiative. It's quite handy. You probably want to go first uh, with them, with uh, Harlequins. Webway Walker. Before deployment, add up to D3 units in your Warlord's detachment. Or select D3 units in your detachment. Each unit has one of the following special rules. Deep Strike, Infiltrate, Scout. Uh, each unit may select a different special rule. That's cool. That's very, very good. Maybe you're starting to think you can start flanking units. Deep Striking them. Scout just gives you that extra move. Yeah, that's good. Uh, six, Trick of the Light. Immediately after all forces have deployed and all scout redeployments have been made, you may remove this Warlord and or up to D3 other friendly units with the Harlequin's faction within 12 each unit that is removed can be immediately deployed again using the normal deployment rules or placed in reserve trick of the light <laughs> quite cool. you should imagine you can have some fun with that one so that's pretty good pretty good next one is uh, Twilight Luck of the Laughing Gun you can re-roll all right, okay. Same, 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 right. So these are all the same. So uh, the first three results here for all of these are the same. So we'll just go straight to number four here. Narrator of Wars. If the mission uses variable game length, you may add two or subtract two from any D6 roll that determine if the game ends or continues. That's quite pivotal. I mean, that's potentially can win you the game by controlling that. I'm sure there's Harlequin players that have won games based on this result they've got here on the Twilight table. Steps of Mortal Transition. Uh, any to wound rolls of six inflicted by your Warlord in close combat, or any to wound 
roll of five plus for making a kiss of death attack has the instant death. Okay, interesting. Dance of Infinite Mirrors. Once per game, your Lord and his unit can make a mirror leap instead of moving in the movement phase. A unit making a mirror leap moves up to 24. And moving in this manner, your Lord and his unit can move over all other models and terrain as if it was open ground, but they cannot end their move on top of other models or impassable terrain. A unit cannot charge in the turn it makes a mirror leap. Okay, quite handy, but I think I like light at the moment. Right, dark is the last one. We'll go straight to number four. Dance of Nightmares Made Flesh. Enemy units in base contact with your warlord or his unit must roll an additional d6 when taking fear or morale checks. That's cool. That is good. Twisted Encore. At the end of the game, before determining the winner of the battle, you may move your warlord and his unit once, as if it were the movement phase. <laughs> then, either run or shoot as if it were the shooting phase, and then if you wish, charge or fight a single round of close combat as if it were the assault phase. Or your opponent can fire over watch and fight back as normal. That's madness. That's utter madness. If your warlord is locked in close combat at the end of the game, he and his unit can only choose to fight one additional round of close combat. If embarked on transport, the warlord's unit may disembark, but the transport cannot move or shoot. After the warlord and his unit have performed these extra actions, the game ends. <laughs> Just as the game finishes, you think it's all over, and then there is a twisted encore. The final joke. If your warlord is removed as a casualty whilst fighting a challenge, both players roll off immediately. If you win, or the result is a draw, your warlord's opponent is also removed as a casualty. <laughs> So, crazy, final joke, there's some, there's some, um, I, possibly these are some of the most high powered warlord traits that I've seen, a lot of these are, 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 are crazy rolls here, um, results that you can get, here and here, um, you know, these last, well these, all, all of these, I mean, this, I say this one's the most powerful, here. So yeah, I'll be rolling on these. Um, I don't think there'd be any doubt about that. Uh, so we've covered the weapons here as we've gone along. Uh, we've covered these. So these Enigmas of the Black Globe, these little upgrades that you can take, and they're, they are plausible to take because if you're taking Troop Master as your army uh, Warlord, then uh, you know he's able to take from here um, and take these upgrades. It's not that you've got a fixed character that can't go to this, uh, your troop master can. So it'd be interesting to look at some of these. Right, so the first one is the Storied Sword. Uh, it's plus one strength, it's mastercrafted melee. So it's basically a, a better power weapon that you could give your troop master. It's usually 15 points. The Storied Sword will cost you 25 points, you're paying 10 points. So, yeah, I probably wouldn't bother with that. As I said, I wouldn't take you know, 25 points just to give him a Mastercrafted Power Weapon. I don't think I'd bother with that one. Crescendo. It's range 12, strength 4, AP 5. Pistol. Blade Storm. It's just that rending, special roll. Or oh, strength 6, AP 2 if you get 6s to wound. And then Quick Fire. When a weapon the special roll rolls a 6 to wound. Target is wounded automatically, and that's a blade storm. And then quick fire, a model firing this weapon can fire a number of times equal to its attack characteristic. All of these shots must be made at the same target unit. Hmm. And crescendo will cost you five points. Now, you might be guessing where I'm turning. <laughs> Solitaire. You can take items from the Enigmas of the Black Library. So, there's a question here I don't know the answer to. If you know it, then leave it in the comments. 
uh, can he take this pistol, this crescendo, and then still keep his... Uh, oh no, he hasn't got a pistol. He's got Harlequin's Caress, Harlequin's Kiss. So, uh, is he allowed to take the pistol on top of that and still keep both of those? Can he keep the Harlequin's Kiss, Harlequin's Caress, and then take the pistol as well? It's an interesting one. Um, because of his high amount of attacks, six attacks. Um, that's how many shots he gets, and he's at BS. No end, so it's crazy to hit. So the crescendo sounds like a good idea for him. Um, it's range 12 as well, it's very good. To take that will cost you five points. So there's, a, there's an opportunity there for five points to take a crazy upgrade for him. Um, but need to answer that question, will he still keep those other close combat weapons? Uh, Mask of Secrets. A model with a Mask of Secrets has Phyllis. And in addition, enemy models within 12 suffer minus two to their leadership. Okay, not bad. It's the kind of one you'd forget to use during the game. And if you forget to use it, then it's a waste of points. Mask of Secrets is 15 points to take that. Uh, Serogax, Kerogax Rose um, is Strength of the User. It's melee, Mastercrafted, Shred, Kiss of Death. Uh, so it's uh, just an upgraded. Uh, weapon that. Okay. So this is an upgraded Harlequin's Kiss. Usually costs you five points. This one will cost you uh, 15 points. So yeah, that's an option to take. Make it a bit better. Just remember that you must use it. Don't forget about it during the game. Star Mist Raiment. Uh, Model of Star Mist Raymond in its shooting phase. If it runs, it has a 3 plus in one to the start of its next shooting phase. Star Mist Raymond, 25 points to do that. I wouldn't bother with that at all. Laughing God's Eye. All friendly units within 12 uh, have the Adamantium Wheel Special Rule, and that will cost you 20 points to do that. Okay. So there are some good ones in there. Crescendo. Fascinating. And then, uh, yeah, I'll say that's the most interesting one. If anyone knows the answer to that question, then just leave it in the comments there. Right, so then we're on to uh, the Phantasmancy Discipline. Uh, so this is for your Shadow Seers here to use these powers. Um, so you've got one Shadow Seer, you know, is it worth having one? You know, what can he use if he's going to use one, possibly two powers a turn? Or if you have a number of a couple of shadows here, then what's the options there? If, I've, if I'm taking this formation here where they can infiltrate, they're stealth shrouded, I can move him in uh, so that he's out of range of being charged and shot at by close range weapons, but how far can some of these reach? Be interesting to see. So Veil of Tears, uh, which is familiar, we know that one from the previous um, Eldar, uh, the old, older Eldar Codex that had the Harlequins in. Uh, Veil of Tears is a blessing that targets the Shadow Seer and his unit whilst the power is in effect. An enemy unit wishing to target the Shadow Seer or his unit must roll 2d6 times 2. If the Shadow Seer or his unit are not within the distance of inches, the enemy unit may not fire this turn. Okay, so infiltrate him is quite close. 2d6 times 2. So your average is, say, 7 on 2d6. Double it's 14. 14 inches on average, you know, it may disrupt his fire. A bit there. Okay. So, Dance of Shadows. Dance of Shadows is a blessing that targets a single friendly unit within 18, whilst the power is in effect. All models in the target have the Stealth and Shrouded Special Rules. That's extremely good. Um, say you uh, infiltrate your Shadow Seer in, up the table. So you're anticipating, you hope your army's deployed, it's ready to burst up the table. But you infiltrate him further up, say he's at the halfway point of the table, and he's hidden, tucked away. Uh, you then move up the table as fast as you can, and you reach where he is, and then you then get him to put that onto a friend unit of 18, so unit of the jet bikes, whatever, and you give them stealth and shrouded. Super. 
So you can do it that way, even if he's not with the unit. Uh, if you take that, then he's he's then going to be able to uh, hang around your units and then uh, give them some protection. So that's extremely good one to take. It's just what are the odds of you getting you know each game rolling out or all of these decent? It'd be interesting to see. The Peel of Discord Warp Charge One. It's a Nova. It's range nine, strength four, assault two d six, concussive. So he finds himself in the middle of trouble. Can let that off. That's okay. It's not bad. Uh, how you roll here? So again, yeah, this one. If I take that, he's going to have to be separate. He can't be with his unit. He can't be with a unit. Um, this one's going to encourage you just to to move in for the kill quickly um, and get in amongst the enemy. Shards of light. So which five power the foreign profile? Strength three, it's range twenty-four, assault three d six, and blind. Okay, that's all right. Not that great. Next, fog of dreams, warp charge two for this one. So malediction with range of twenty-four. Whilst the power is in effect, a target unit can only fire snapshots. When rolling to hit in close combat, running hit six is superb power. That one is excellent. So at the moment, there's half a chance of you rolling a good one. Laugh of Sorrows. Laugh of Sorrows is a witch, fire power with a range of 24. Target must take two separate leadership tests. The unit will suffer one wound for each point the first leadership test was fouled by, and one wound for each point the second leadership was, test was passed by. Mm -hmm, let's just reread that here. This is weird. So range 24, the target must take two separate leadership tests. The target unit will suffer one wound for each point the first test was fouled by, and one wound for each point the second leadership test was passed by. Armour and cover saves cannot be taken. <laughs> That's mad. The devastation that that can cause. You can't take cover saves and you can't take armour saves. I mean... You could wipe out a unit with that power. If your opponent rolls bad, if your opponent rolls bad and they're really well, you know it's going to happen. There's two rolls to make there. Um, you could cause you're crazy. Yeah, that's fascinating. That one. That's a superb power. That one. Mirror of Minds. Mirror of Minds is a focus switch firepower with a range of 24. Uh, the target model and the Shadow Seer both, both roll d6 and add their respective leadership values to the result. If the scores are drawn, or if the Shadow Seer's uh, Shadow Seer score is higher, the target suffers a single wound, no armor or cover saves allowed. Repeat the process, either until the target model is slain, or the target model rolls a higher score than the Shadow Seer. <laughs> and then his leadership is 10, I believe. Yeah. Again, another uh, crazy um, rule here. Yeah, it's very, very good. So yeah, there are, there are a couple here that are okay, and the others are superb. So, Shadow Seer the answer is yes, take one or two and cause trouble. That's it, and there's just a short summary there at the end, and there's no fold out page uh, for that. But there it is. Um, the only thing lacking, I think, for Harlequins is a flyer. How are they going to deal with uh, enemy air power? Uh, you can, one option you can do is to ignore it. Um, and a lot of times you can pull that off. You can ignore enemy fire, uh, air power and then you can just, you know, jink and, and survive it, the firepower coming in, and just accept the fact you're not going to do too much damage. Um, you can do shots where you're trying to pick it off, you know, snap fire hits, if units are spare, that kind of thing. Um, so, I mean, that may well be an option. Uh, but it's, it may well be difficult to take on air power. Uh, so, that's kind of pointing towards 
them being as allies, perhaps, better for them. So half your Elder Army, you know, you can dedicate half of it to take some Harlequins or for the Dark Elder, the same. Um, but I still think they could be a standalone army. Uh, so leave your comments, especially if you have a pure Harlequin army, you know, Harlequins only in your force, how well they do. Uh, leave that in the comments, what units you take, what strategies you use, what combinations you use, especially for the Harlequin troops. Um, you know, upgrades and your points, values and so on. Uh, there'll be a lot of people tuning in and they're tempted, they're interested in collecting Harlequins. Or they have a few units like I do and they may be looking to expand it. Uh, I think the units are exciting. There's definitely some, some deadly uh, power within uh, this force. So uh, leave your comments there uh, in the section, comment section on the video. So that's the review. As I mentioned earlier, I've got it from GamingFigures.com. Uh, you can get uh, the Warhammer 40,000 stuff at a discounted rate. Um, check out their website there, and uh, they'll have the Harlequin Codex available. But that's the review for Harlequins. Uh, it is tempting to uh, collect them. You know, it wouldn't be a vast army um, if you fancy it. You know, it's an army that's going to look very striking, very, very, very strong theme to them and uh, in my opinion they do have potential to cause uh, a lot of trouble uh, to their opponents and uh, I think it's not, it could well be very very deadly indeed but the philosophy I think is to move up quick and then uh, survive the incoming fire and then just release a whole load of trouble um, and that would be a good uh, strategy to take uh, and I think it would be humiliating for your opponent to be um, bedazzled by a dancing bunch of clowns and get um, hammered by them. I think it'd be a very entertaining game indeed. But that's the uh, Codex review for Harlequins. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.